Hello, 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 hello. So today I am going to do and show you and try to show you how you should play and build a repertoire while playing and might even show it afterwards what you need to do. So I will try to make it fairly compact of what's happening. So in this specific case, you really have to be on point and not stray away. Now, it is very much fun to experiment, but when you're building a repertoire, that's not ideal. Fix the view. All right, that's better. Hello, people. So I am going to, as usual, play in this tournament. And what I think is the best idea is to be keeping it consistent. As you will see, I will play always the same system so I can drill it in. By the way, hello chat, hello Drod, hey Saf, hey Diakon. So I will be kind of playing the same lines. Okay, so I am going to go for e4. And all the time I will be playing knight c3. And that's actually a good way of building a repertoire. Now c6 is not good. Problem with c6 is that this is reserved for the knight, which can defend this guy on, oh, on e5. After c6, actually runs into d4 takes takes and this is sort of that reversed Danish sort of structure where this knight on d8 is terrible e5 immediately acting against that knight knight h5 the knight on the rem is grim question if I can win it and the answer is yes, I can win it. G4 is not a good move in general, but in this specific case, it's pretty good. In E4, none of these ideas work because I have the good old en passant and then the knight is falling. So what I will be attempting is to play knight c3 systems with white. In that way, it's much, much easier for me to remember and for you if you're trying to pick up this repertoire that I will be playing this event. So that's what I will be doing as white. Hitting this knight, I mean that queen and that knight, that is. Hey, Bumsh. d5 and e takes d6 is the en passant and it's not only one threat here but triple of those threats and all of them are quite deadly queen e7 takes knight d5 note this knight can't really move away because there's problem on d7 let's take on h5 Castles. Okay, so I'm gonna just go collect them all and then I'm gonna develop. Now, if I would defend the knight, I could run into these sort of traps. So, winning material always has a downside, and the downside here being that you can run into attacks if your king is stuck in the middle for whatever reason, for the reasons you're winning lots of material or the reasons. That is something else. I think this loses, this loses to takes, takes, check, king here, queen f6 here, and then checkmate. g7. The point is h6. King has to go back, then queen f6, queen g7 is checkmate. Hey, Casper, how are you?
Now I wouldn't pre-move queen f6 because in case of king g6 that would be a horribic. Horribic? Not really. Just if I were a frog. But horrific way of going out. So let's just go queen g5 and that's a good checkmate. Hey Guillermek, appreciate the love, thank you. And I will be trying to do the same with black, trying to follow one system of play. And that way it will be much, much easier to remember for myself to know what lines to do and play. Okay. E4. Um, which one should it be? <clears throat> so I'm going to keep with this one, c5, e6, e5. That costs a pawn. So I'm playing this c5, e6, and I will keep doing that. Um, a6. This is actually dangerous. Don't want to run into those ideas. So that's why I play a6, just to avoid any of those dangers. Now, a good thing that I have a pawn on e4, it takes away juicy and important squares on d3 and f3. There, okay, so it's time to develop. And that's one of those things that you should never forget. Developing your pieces is critical. Just over defending that guy. In c7, just sidestepping this pin. And... I can always go bishop e7, but bishop d6 will be sort of the better you dream about in these type of positions. Thank you, Anan Okeji. Appreciate it. Thank you for the good luck wishes. <clears throat> it takes. And now I get the bishop pair. And even though bishop pairs are not often celebrated by the young people, it amounts to a whole lot. Okay, knight e3. And uh, let's start rolling. I want to start rolling and f4. Obviously, my opponent would like to keep it closed. So I'm going to take on f3, opening it up for my bishop. And this will be perfect for this battery, which, will I, which I will build with bishop d6 and queen c7. Bishop d6, and look at those guys lurking. Let's get the rook on the file. And as you can see, in every move, I'm trying to develop. There, rook f2. And white is still behind. That means there could be a tactical shot possible here. Maybe. So let's take. And the point is I want to move that rook. Exactly, that's what I was hoping for. And go queen f4. The idea is hitting this pawn and that knight. And now I'm going to take that knight. Queen e2. Do I want to exchange queens? But first off, let's take on d4. Takes with d, and now there'll be issues on f3. One takes and now I take the house. The whole house. Let's see if I can get some. Yep. 
lighting right. Okay, that's better. Thank you for the follow. So that's one of those deals. Again, I'm going to play this c5 e6, Sicilian, and e4 knight c3 with white. So already I have it set. I know what I'm going to do. And that's very important if you're trying to get better at the game. So just keep rolling. Keep drilling in. I'm going for c5 e6 yet again. I can't really pre-move it because there could be a more of where you're supposed to capture. O e6. And c6, controlling this juicy square. And with white actually committing with c4. I could actually fight for the center. You know what? I will. I'm actually going to just play knight d4 and stop white from ever playing d4 himself, herself. There, e5. Now I've got the center and white is a little bit passive. Okay. Um, let's go. 97, either going this way or this way, it really depends. There, d6. What do I like to play against d4? Um, I think we're going to stick with the King's Indian this time. Okay, um, let's go bishop g4. There, queen d7, setting up bishop h3 ideas, also pressing there, bishop h3. f4, so it's still a closed position. So in general, I don't think we need to be Varied here too much. You can go f5. I have more control over the center than white does, so all these exchanges would help me. Note that this king would be in danger if I get my queen on the long diag, but with every exchange, my queen will get closer. The only problem that I have is this bishop on f8. So with that, I have to be careful. Bishop g5, okay. Take, take. Take. I was considering other moves, but this looks best. Can I play e4 lines? That's what is the big plan. In fact, here. Because of these guys being a little loose, I have this move of queen g4, hitting on e4, and hitting on g5. There's no queen a4 check, which looks nasty. I have knight c6 blocking, blocking this view. And apart from that, those guys will be hanging. 
So subtle little tactics often become problematic. Picks and you can check first. Rook F3. Let's take with the bishop. And that's why you should always be vigilant for these little tricks. They can change a life. They can change a life. Queen A4 check. Queen A4, can I go B5? I think I can go B5. Not only am I defending that rook, but I'm hitting on E2 and will boomerang back to B5. Takes and Queen B5. Where technically I'll be up a whole piece and the attack is gone. And note also that the bishops are very good at building positions. So with bishop f6, I can cut off all the attacks and just go castling. That's sometimes fairly difficult with a knight, or at least it takes a lot of time. There, now it's going to be an endgame. So again, cut it off. Then castles. The king is safe. Now I didn't want to go here, because then the rook could invade. So I felt bishop f6, just connect them. My bishop acts like an honorary pawn, castles, get the rook behind the pawns and just start rolling them. So what I will try to play is King's Indian, Sicilian and E4 systems. H4, castle. And notice that even when I have the advantage, I make sure that I'm developed, that my king is safe. It's always high on my mark. There. Okay. Stick. That was the goal. Each and every case. Mm. All right, let's start rolling. Start rolling down the board. Just making it a nice little passer. Let's go d2. Bishop is taboo. h6, it's defended. And I'm just going to go on the first rank. And once my rook reaches c1, promotion is unstoppable. <clears throat> okay, rook c8. Rook is coming down there. Problem is rook e1. I could have checked, but um, all roads lead to Rome. And rook e1 is going to be a winner. Oh, I, you can't even go there now because that square is covered by my bishop and then it's a promotion. Thank you for the follow. Chennai. There, I'll take you. Thank you. And that's a win. So 
again, central control. If your opponent gives you the chance to take it, take it immediately. You've got to seize the moment. That's crucial in this game of chess. Okay, so as I told you guys, I'm going for this e4 knight c3. And why do I play it this way? Because I'm creating, I'm creating a memory hook. So I'm making sure that I know what I'm doing. So I know I'm always gonna go e4 knight c3. So here I will go bishop d3. An interesting little move. Now, my advice is for you to either go here or e5. Obviously, e5 is the main line. Bishop d3 is very interesting. In fact, this helped me become a grandmaster, this bishop d3 move. Knight d7, and this is not an ideal scenario for my opponent. This knight is not supposed to be on d7 when you get your bishop out on b4. Bishop e7, probably my opponent is noticing the same thing, queen g4. I am already targeting black's pawns. g6, let's go bishop h6, so there's no h5, also stopping any sorts of castling ideas. Okay, c5. <clears throat> let's go f4. And I'm just gonna go ahead and build a half wall. Once c takes d4 happens though, the attack from black is kind of dying down, which can be annoying. Hello everyone, knight f3. I'm gonna go short castling. I could even consider long castles, but my pawns seem a bit weak on that side of the board. Chairman, thank you for the follow. there and this is a typical move before you are stopping black from actually posting threats on b2 but now i have b5 right there should i take um it's a good question in fact i might go hunting on the other side Bishop g7, queen h7. Hello, hello there. Knight c5. Bishop g7. And I'm setting up this idea of queen h7 and suddenly that rook doesn't feel too comfortable on g8. And again, that's why I'm not a big fan of the French anymore. Because these guys are super passive. Okay. Let's take that pawn. Takes, c takes. <clears throat> knight takes b5 and i am going for knight g5 immediately targeting that pawn on f7 and that's kind of a deadly combo over there in c7 rook c does rook c1 make any sense h8 g8 so i'm making sure i have pressure there also pinning the king just tying the knot very very 
tight. But bishop d7 runs into queen f7 and queen f8. And then knight e6 is winning the lady. Because it is going to be a fork down. And it is game. And it is game. Knight d4. Just getting my guys in. Rook c1 check. That was probably not necessary. Not at all. However, what's done is done. But, um... In any case, it's an extra queen. Should be a clean win. Okay. Check here. Ah, uh, no. Let's check here first. There. Let's take that extra pawn. Why not? There, queen takes a5 check. There, king d8, e6. Note that can't really make any moves with the king. I have rook c6. Also, knight a5 is ruled illegal. In a, a check, let's take that bishop. <clears throat> King b6, all right, b7, there, in d8, just going for a quicker checkmate, six, in b5, okay, let's take. E6, check. E4, let's take. And it is a mate. That's good. That's good. So, yeah, I always advise you guys to go repeat, repeat, create a memory hook of the first few moves. That helps you grow as a player. So again, let's try to remember to play this d4 now i'm going to go for the king's indian always knight f6 g6 g7 i let e4 happen which probably i shouldn't have now in this specific case knight e4 is a very good move because if knight e4 i have d5 hitting both the knight and the bishop f7 <clears throat> there yep Okay, e6. There. Let's go h6. So there's no knight g5 jumps. And if knights are given and taken away from these jumps, you will have good positions in those specific cases. Now I'm going to maneuver my knight over there. Jasper, thank you for the bits. Vin bits, unless copyrighted by Eric. In which case, they're victory bits, crush bits. Thank you. And up six. I'm trying to exchange some stuff up, stuff down, because this knight is a little bit annoying. Although I have the bishop pair, so in the long term, I should be the one favored. There, g5, and believe it or not, we are getting sort of this Dutch kind of vibes. This position has a Dutch vibe to it. A queen d3 would be nasty if and if this would actually have a threat. It really doesn't. Let's just go knight d5. <clears throat> I want to get my bishop out or even go g4. So I'm actually stopping knight f5. Planning to get that bishop out at some moment takes. Wow. I expected many things in life. But I didn't expect this one. Okay, I'll take. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Okay. Let's go 
Okay. Can't go knight f4, queen h7. I'm a bit surprised to see this one, to be honest with you. So let's just go back, defend everything. <clears throat> now, because of these good old bishops, I feel that this should be much, much better for me. Takes, and then I take on f5. Well, the thing is, okay, I do have the two pieces against the rook, so I am very much fine with getting into the end game. <clears throat> Also, my king is fairly well placed. It is sort of poised for the endgame. Rook g8, well, if you don't, then I might just revert to the attacking play. Okay. We'll see six. I want to be able to block with knight d5. There, I have bishop h6 hitting there. Rook g3. Hmm. That is a little nasty. In d8. If you want me to exchange, well, I'll do it on my terms. Rook e1. Hmm. Okay, let's take. I don't like the way I'm playing this. Not at all. <clears throat> a5 there queen b5 bothering those pawns my queen is actually doing some defensive task on the fifth oh there's your schlock It's actually a tricky position. Trickier than I thought it would be. But it's still fine. Still fine. I'm gonna go a5, just soften the structure. Might even push it to a4, just to have this a3 pawn as a future target. Queen f3. Okay, don't quite get that move. Go a4. Just fixing this pawn. h4, go queen d5. Queen e2. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. e6. g4 and that's actually very uncomfortable g4 okay bishop g7 g5 Let's go here. I'm trying to maneuver my knight over there. Check. King f8. Just keeping my king close to these pieces. Queen g6. Hmm. Okay, let's go e5. <clears throat> Ooh, e5 was bad. It was very bad. h5. Okay, knight e7. I don't like h5. 
don't think it's that good. Especially as I'm taking away some important squares. I can take on d4 now. And this queen can't come back. That's the issue. White is facing. Probably, probably before that, queen f5 check would have been quite strong. Okay, takes. Now I have queen g5 check. And that rook is falling. There, um, king takes e7. King e6, just going upwards. Queen there. Queen d7, let's just hide it from any danger. There, okay. c7 just going ping b6 <clears throat> d5 okay b6 just run away run away from that guy this guy there okay but then I'll just take that pawn I'll just take this pawn over there and this is just a clean end game win yeah yeah my opponent did very well did very very well I don't even know how I'm standing oh I'm actually on the verge of getting on the top so again e4 knight c3 just a way to remember it knight c3 and i'm going to go with the grand prix now you can also play the close sicilian but um grand prix is actually a little bit more exciting Knight f3 there Okay, bishop b5, pin it to win it. Very important. Indeed, Boxar, Grand Prix time, let's castle. And what I like about the system is that it gives me quick development. So let's just take. There, e5. And black is actually neglecting that side of the game which can become a problem. Knight g4. Knight g4 doesn't feel right. Yep, let's go e6. You're try, trying to freeze this bishop in on f8. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And also this knight is just not ideally placed. Probably d takes e5 was mandatory. E6 takes. I can always think about taking. Do I want to? No, I don't want to. I hit on B7. I hit on many places. Um, could take. 
I'm gonna reinforce this pawn. Long, longer that pawn is on freeze, I mean that bishop is on freeze, the better it gets over here. If I take, then there would have been f takes e6, so that's why I didn't go that direction. Not that I'm not better. I think I am still much, much better in that case, but this is probably more precise. Okay, let's take that pawn though. It is an extra pawn, so it would be rude to reject. Been rude to reject. So the thing is, the reason I have this F five pawn there is to support the E six pawn. Just take it back, and then Black would still be very passive. So in this scenario, actually queen c6 is even more uncomfortable. Got to go knight d7, but then I hit the jackpot. Takes, takes, check. There's no mate. Let's just take the jackpot. Take everything that is possible to take. Um, let's check. We'll take that pawn as well. Now we just have too many fellows on the board. Okay. Um, why am I thinking? That's a good question. I have an idea. We just start rushing down this pawn on the board. Okay, again, a friendly check. A5, push it, push it, push the pawn. It's going to be a lady. It's gonna be a lady. Okay, push, 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 push. I even have queen b8 just promoting. So how do you guys build your own repertoires? Is it similar to what I'm telling you or is it different? And after the tournament, I think I will put you and give you a study so you can see what I was doing there. Okay b8 and now promotion incoming bishop b6 doesn't work because i just capture there let's take that rook queen there okay let's play d4 before we get some nasty bishop b6 check out of the blue don't do that to me please don't try to mate me that would be ni not nice at all. There, rook a7, you're coming in. You're coming in hot. There, boom, takes bishop b5 and down with the lady. Down with the lady. I tended to learn one line in an opening, says Calibus, and then keep playing it, learning sidelines as I went. That's a decent way of looking at things, Calibus. Yeah, so I, Rudwig, I am actually trying to give a bit of a help of how to build these repertoires
yep, there was and no problem at all. I am going to just do a bit of a summary. What is the gist of it all? Now this is a sample repertoire, obviously you build it the way you want to. And my main idea was to go e4 and knight c3 in each and every case. And that's actually very good, creates a memory hook. Now let's go bishop c4. Um, knight e2. Um, d3 and I am going to play for f4s okay bishop g5 so d5 is not that easy what really really what what is this what is this am I going nuts could be I'm shocked I am shocked There, let's take. take. Takes. All right, it's time to castle. It takes. And now I'm up a pawn. All those pieces are, are still just lingering around. There, bishop f5, f4. So this is actually the big play. You get the bishop to c4, and then you open it up. So it's sort of like a very modernized version of the king's gambit if you'd like e -E. bishop e6 there okay um i'm being a bit slow Let's go queen f2, just avoiding this idea. Takes, okay. All right, let's play it aggressively. It's probably not the best, but um, I am going to try and be aggressive. Takes, I'll take on b7. And yes, I gave up some pawns, but I've got a very active rook, which wouldn't have happened otherwise. That's, that's not, that's not ideal, I don't think, for black. Let's get this rook on the open file. If I could get the rook on e7, that'd be perfect. Yeah, definitely. I think that I messed up in that opening. So I will check that one out. Rotvik. So I'm going to come back to that one. A5. Okay, let's create. Or it should be time to create a luft. Or F5, F6. Let's go queen e3 first. Oh, queen e3. I wanted to keep the queen here, so there's no checks over here. Maybe I will have to create a luft sooner or later. There. Um. 
Man, I'm so slow. So slow. So slow, it's insane. Give me four. I mean, check, I'll just hide. So on the second thought, it's not a big deal. So is it, you're wondering, is still D3 was better than having F4 eventually? That's a good question, but F4 is by in itself not a bad idea. I think it works, definitely works. Thank you for the follow. For the follow, num, x. A4, and I'm not scared of that pawn. I can just go back, stop it, just take it, and then go from there. Rook A1, bother that pawn. There, I go Rook C4, yes I can. I want to chase this knight from getting to D4 and B4. And um, I'm just gonna bring my king otherwise there, just rook b4, rook b2, and take the pawn. There, rook b2. And I was wrong. Well, I don't know what I was thinking. Um. I don't know what I was thinking. And again, it's funny how it goes. Bringing the king is always, it always should be high on the list and I didn't do it. Shame, shame, shame on me. B2 and now finally I can win it. Probably my opponent should have played rook c8 and it's much, much tougher to go and continue from that position. Play g3, rook d2, I always have king e3. There, all right. Um, rook king e3, I'm just going this way, trying to help out my pawn, king d4. There, okay. C4, this pawn is going to fall. I'm just making sure that everything I have is defended. C3, I'm just gonna take. Check King B4. There, okay, um, let's take this pawn. I will always have rook c2 to defend this guy. There, rook c2, just defending, and then I'm going to help that pawn turn into a lady. There, up, and we go. We go for c5, c6, c5. The king is just going to help create and make it become a beautiful, beautiful princess. K3, so there's no knight b4. Things going on. Um, let's go c6. There, king a6. We're coming, we're coming closer, closer to you. There, king b7. Take, uh, just take with the king. And the king will actually help out the, the attack. There, check. Now let's just go h4 first. c6. Yeah, I'm not 
doing it the best possible way, but it's still pretty good. Um, let's go rook d2. Check d6. d5. There, h5. g6. Okay, let's take. There, here, gonna check. Unconvenience the king. Now I can double. And now rook g5 is deadly. Deadliness. How do we stay calm during trouble? Um, I don't know. You know, it's practice. It's just practice. Six. Check. 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 G4, just keeping this king stuck. E5. Okay, um, let's take, check, h3, f8, 5, King G4 and it's checkmate. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, yoga. Yoga is actually helpful. Hello, Linux Power. How's it going? How is it going? So probably will be oh, oh, <clears throat> some chances for one more game. And then I will show what is possible or what should be done as sort of a preparation for your game. All right. Um, let's play C5. Well, yeah, I don't know. That's Berserk anyways. Go and do the c5e6 play. g3, d5. You always want to get the central control. d4. Knight e4, but this runs into this move. I hit the rook, the knight, and the pawn on e5, which is a problem. Hey, Rockstone. And Chura, Nambatin, thank you for the follow. Queen e5 there, but then I'll take that knight. That's the first thing I'll do. I'll take that knight. d3, remember of freezing this bishop on c1? Now d3 does the same thing. There, knight c6. Queen a4, bishop d7. I'm still keeping development under control. Queen h4, should be seven. <clears throat> there, knight f6. I don't mind, I don't care for the pawn. What I care for is development. There, rook g8. There, let's go queen a2. Thank you for the follow, NR Tiger. Queen e3, let's give a check. Knight e1, but I think that's a bit too passive. I can go knight d5. 
things takes. And look at that. Everyone's very passive there. Now it is time to castle. Put my king into safety. That gives me a good position, but this runs into bishop h3 check because it turns out that the rook is the one being undefended. So in Oftentimes, if you manage to block your opponent's bishop either with e6 or with d3, you'll see that I'll get very big play in those situations. g4, okay, rook d6, getting the rook over there. King g3, h5, you want to open up in front of your opponent's king, h3, let's take, take, takes, takes, check, 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 checkmate, check, and queen g4 is checkmate. So whatever happened in this game was the following. My opponent made a mistake, a big mistake of dropping the pawn. My opponent had to keep developing, especially because created a weakness along this diagonal. But notice that even in this case, I made sure I played d3, keeping and freezing this bishop on c1. Takes, and again, never gave up on the idea of developing my guys until the last moment when I gave some material back because I felt that I have just enough to checkmate. Thank you. Appreciate it, puzzles and puzzles. Okay, let's berserk. I'm going to go for the king's Indian way of playing. G7, castles. There, in fact, I'm going to be very ultra aggressive. Knight c6, f3 feels a little bit early, but mine might be just wrong. I think I am, it's still just a classical Marozzi. There, queen a5. Probably I should have kept the tension, and that is one of those things that I told you guys. Tension is very important in the game of chess. Whoever releases the tension faces the consequences. Okay, rook c8, eyeing that knight. That's actually the play. That's what you're aiming for here. And I'm going to go for a6, b5 later on. Okay, queen d2, a6, preparing this b5 move. Rook d8, let's go b5. The point is, I have this rook already on this file. So any exchanges happen on b5, it just opens up my rook. Same with this one on c8. That's why rook fc8, a8 is such a big concept in these type of positions.
CB. Um, do I have any intermi intermediate moves? I don't think so. AB. And as I told you, that's why you keep the rook on A8. And this is actually high level play. You just click on it, Cypher Dima. You just click on it. Also, Exxon saying, great, calm stream. Really enjoy your explanations. Thanks so much. I'm happy you guys enjoy it. Thank you for the kind words. And I still have pressure over this guy. Thank you for the follow. Thank you for the follow, Cypher Dima. Bishop b5, but this runs into rook takes c3. There's no more defenders on b5. This is actually a typical sacrificial trap. Well worth remembering. Lukic, thank you for the follow. Gerard as well. And I've got two pieces. And with lots of pressure on these two pawns on a2 and b3, I have good chances to press on through. Let's go rook c8. Take the c file. Queen b2. Okay. I'm going to go queen b4. Just pressing on the bishop and the rook. <clears throat> rook d1. Let's go h5. So I can even go h4, h3, softening this king. I have a better position here, but that doesn't mean it's like winning automatically. You still have to work to convert. The kid is not passive. The King's Indian is not a passive system. In fact, it gives you very good counterplay. Let's go rook b, rook b8. Rook b8. H4. I'm creating more weaknesses. And in fact, if my pawn can get to h3, there'll be some mating ideas on g2. Some mating patterns, we would call it. There. Okay, let's get h3 in there. If you play the King's Indian, you will always play the King's Indian. That is a matter of choice. That is a matter of choice. And probably that statement is false. <laughs> to be honest with you, pretty sure it's false. Okay, Queen B5. Why again playing so slowly? Okay. Now, King marched a bit too far into my territory, so I felt. It is time to give it a visit. Zigo, thank you for the follow. Give it a visit. Queen C1. Queen C1. Okay, it's time to be aggro. And again, you'll see the benefit of having that square, a G2 square, covered there. Okay, Queen H5 check. That's positive over there. Ticks, ticks. And look, the reason this attack might work and might be pretty strong is because all of the white pieces are kind of chilling on the other side of the board. Thank you for the follow.
There are plenty of threats here. One of them is bishop f3, queen h3. So I'm kind of anticipating f takes in this position. Otherwise, that's just crushing. So yeah, takes, 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 takes. And I'll take away some important squares. Fe, that's not a good move. That rook is hanging. That is gonna be game pretty soon. Should I check here first or take? Let's take this one. Rook d2. d2 doesn't strike me as a great idea. In g5, we f1, bishop d4. Yep, check. And that queen is pinned. f2 and bishop d4, check. Can't take. Queen g1 is not an ugly checkmate actually pretty nice so yep all right so let me show you what has been done over here now here usually I shouldn't take on d4 and that's one of those things when you learn about the opening and tension you should always keep the tension. That's very important. And I actually, with taking on d4, went against my concept, and that's a problem. You should never do that. So cd, my d4, knight c6, should be 3d6. We actually got into the Marozzi, but instead, I should have gone d6 here and knight c6. It's a well-known pawn sacrifice. Takes, takes, if you take, go queen a5, and I have lots of pressure. With your pieces being so scattered, this is very good for black. So d6 is a much, much better move because it keeps the tension. c takes d4 actually improves this knight, which was passive on e2, and now I can go to d4. Here, go this way, and probably my opponent should have gone rook fd1, realizing that this pawn needs defenders. Here, b5, as I mentioned before, that's why you bring your f rook to c8, because this rook on a8 has some business to tend to. Andu Andonescu, thank you for the follow. So cb a b bishop b5 takes takes queen b5 and this is actually a typical trap takes takes queen b5 and surprisingly enough when your opponent has two rooks and you only have one rook you want to retain that one lone rook that you have it's very important So not, not to saying that um, getting the queen behind, no, you don't want to get the queen behind. The queen on d2 was fine, but I would have put this rook on c1 and the other rook on d1. Takes. And this was actually a great plan. So don't forget that, and that's very important in chess. Winning positions, bad positions, you really have to have a plan. It's paramount. Queen here, queen g5, here, if takes, boom, baby, and you get checkmated. Knight e4, king takes, queen h5. If fe, I can go queen g4 and queen g2, it's almost mate. Tick, tick. 
and Fe was a big mistake. F takes G4 would have been better. But even in this case, I can just go ahead and win material back with knight g3 check and queen d4, or just knight f2. And with me having a better pawn structure and extra pawn, this must be completely winning. So, there's another thing that I wanted to touch upon. And I'm going to do a bit of a study, a short one. So, how, how to build repertoire. White concepts. So, e4, we've seen c5, e5, e6. Now, for memory hooks, and for the reasons of memory, I'd advise you to have two knight c3 as your go-to. You don't want to mess around. You want to know that your second move is going to be knight c3, and you go from there. And that will definitely jog your memory. So e5, knight c3, knight f6, bishop c4. This is what I played. This is, I, I would call this the Alakines. I think I'll call it the Alakines Italian. Because it's not quite an Italian. An Italian is this with no hope of f4. However, with this system, you will get the chance to play f4 later. Should be four, and probably I should have played d3 here. Should have played d3, castles. And I wonder, I'm not quite sure, c6, and I think I blundered there. c6, so c6 is good. So I've got to play knight f3 instead here. Okay. So it's important to play knight f3 here. If c6, you can castle quickly, and then you'll have lots of pressure on e5. Knight e2 wasn't good because I run into these d5, d4 ideas. So this is not that good. It's good for black. So knight f3 in this specific case is good with this bishop on b4 already. Now that's one thing that I wanted to touch upon. And the other one is c5, again, knight c3. And I only give it an exclamation mark because it's sort of a memory hook. Which makes it much, much easier to remember because you know that in 99.9999 cases, you want to play knight c3, d6. And even if you're not a big fan of playing the Grand Prix, this is a good starting point. Like you can go this way, just as I did in the game. And bishop b5, you can also go bishop c4. It is basically a matter of style. You're going to go castle, go d3. Let's see, like here, 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 d3. And you're going queen e1, queen g3, attacking on the king. Now, even though you played knight c3, you can anytime transpose back to the open Sicilian. So that's kind of the good news with these knight c3, two knight c3 openings that you can always get these transpositions. So when I say e4, c5, knight, c3, exclamation mark, I say, say it with the idea and the mention that that's good for you to remember it. It's much easier to do it in that direction. Knight, c3. Okay, and let me give the black concept. 
So I'm going to rotate the board. That will be what I'm going to give as a knowledge today. E6. I advise to play E6. In this case, just go for A6. Knight C3, Queen C7. And it's actually very interesting. You are going to play against that E4 pawn, as you will see in future streams. Knight F6, castles B5. And every move you make is based against this guy. And if you can undermine it, you will have a very good position. That's one of those things. E6, and as you've seen, knight f3, e6, c4, knight c6, knight c3. And even though we had a6, a3 in, probably you don't have to play a6. I was content with this hedgehog position. Leading to a hedgehog. But knight d4 is a very good move. Stop your opponent from gaining space. That's an important concept. And that's important. In fact, if you want to be super accurate, you play knight d4 immediately, saying you are never going to play d4. And when we get this position, it's actually black who has more space and a good, good situation. Because of the extra space. And last but not least, with the King's Indian, Bishop G7, E4. Now you can go D6 or Castle. It really doesn't matter. Both is fine. One thing to remember is C5, Knight E2 is D6. Not that C takes D4 is necessarily bad, but it is somewhat of a concession. So again, play D6 here keeping the tension and if bishop e3 you can go knight c6 d5 knight e5 and you will get good counterplay so that is the idea and that is what i'm giving you as an option to do, always create these memory hooks that help you develop all these things. Now, if d5, you can still go knight d7, knight d5. d5, you can go knight d7, knight d5. This is still possible, kind of transposing, or e6 immediately undermining the d5 pawn. So that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed your time here. And I am going to pass on the torch. I really hope you had a fun time. And if you did, I hope to see you in the future as well. So this is what I do. Create these ideas and follow them through. So whenever you're trying to get better at the game, make sure that you follow these steps. Again, I'm just going to repeat it once more. Drill, play these out, play them regularly. And that's important. Why? Because that's how you remember it. You create it, you create these memory hooks, you follow through, repeat, rinse and repeat. You've got to get in there and get into the mindset of drilling. And again, last but not least, what I want to mention, tension. Tension is your friend. I've seen many of those games before. 
you don't want to ditch tension. As you've seen in my game, I got gone and went for that Marozzi, but should have gone d6 earlier on. So I really hope that was a help for you and wish you a good day wherever you are. Take care all. Bye-bye.